Hello, I'm Rafael and I'm here to present our study of Augmented Reality Activism. I worked with Erika Cruz from Carnegie Mellon University as part of our internship at SNAP and we extended on research I did at the University of Washington in collaboration with Dayton Kelly. We were mentored by Drs. Daniela Rosner from the UW, Andres Moroy Hernandez, and Fanny Liu at SNAP. In this presentation, I will be talking about our motivation and related work, the methods that we used, findings, open questions and opportunities, and I will close with our contribution. Before starting, I will clarify some of the language that I will be using here. We use the term augmented reality, or AR, to refer to the technology that digitally embeds visual and auditory information on physical environments. We use the term activism to refer to the act of promoting social change, and the term creators to refer to the people who make AR projects for activism. Now, I will be talking about the prior work that motivated our research. AR incubated for decades in research laboratories before reaching mass consumer audiences through millions of smartphones and apps like Snapchat filters and Pokemon Go. These developments created the ideal conditions for a new form of activism that used consumer AR technology to promote social causes. Examples of this type of activism include the virtual defacement of corporate logos, unofficial AR installations at museums, and participating in protests through AR. We draw from prior HCI work that concerns blending online and offline action, referred as hybrid activism. This could be using online tools to support offline action or performing synchronous online and offline action, as for example, attending a protest through telepresence. We view AR activism as a form of hybrid activism. AR blends online and offline action in new ways by digitally augmenting physical objects and locations that are associated with social causes. Researchers have suggested that, by using AR in this way, activists could convey more immersive messages for their causes while overcoming physical barriers as such, access to physical locations when protesting is not allowed, or surreal situations like having cartoons walking in real life. Therefore, AR could be a low-cost, yet potentially high-impact way to achieve activist goals. Despite all this potential, we know little about how people are actually using AR for activism, including why do they choose it and what role it plays in achieving their goals. Now, I will be talking about the methods that we used to address those questions. We recruited 20 participants located in six countries that reported a variety of backgrounds, including artists, community organizers, and engineers. We conducted 60 minutes semi structured interviews through video call, where we asked about creators' rationale for using AR, the influence of AR on their projects, and their broader experiences with this technology. After the interviews, we ran an inductive qualitative data analysis that resulted in the findings that I will be presenting next. I will be focusing on a subset of our findings. Please read our paper for all the results. We found that creators used AR and activism to reshape physical contexts, to evoke emotional reactions, and to mitigate risks associated with their actions. First, Creators used AR to reshape elements of the physical environment, such as public spaces and objects, in order to help audiences envision and contextualize their physical reality in new ways without having to physically change it. For example, one creator described how they used AR to reshape a university's public space by creating a virtual memorial for a sexual assault survivor when they faced significant hurdles to creating a physical one on campus. The project used AR to introduce, among other things, a virtual plaque featuring a quote chosen by the survivor. They shared that they found in AR a lightweight means to modify the physical space according to their goals without needing the political or the physical power to do so. In addition to modifying physical spaces, creators also used AR immersive quality to evoke emotional reactions that encourage audiences to critically engage with their projects. For example, one creator's project that addressed environmental justice required the audience to walk short distances, virtually navigating through 3D scans of forests to collect AR oxygen capsules and pieces of the narrative shared by the main character. The experience relied on the audience's body's movement to build up its narrative. The creator reflected on how they wanted people to actually see the world 
and found in AR a way to do that by helping the audience connect more emotionally to the story by moving their bodies instead of just sitting in front of a screen and using a mouse to click through the narrative. Creators also discussed how using AR for activism reshapes the risks and consequences typically associated with traditional activism. As an example of associated risks, consider this project where two creators worked together on remotely modifying election campaign ads to expose a corrupt government from a developing country. They shared that if they have physically painted the words on the posters instead of using AR, they could be imprisoned or killed. At the same time, some people were concerned about the legal uncertainties around AR. For example, a creator of a similar project on the Trump campaign was concerned about where they might overstep and get sued. This shows that while AR has a lot of potential benefits to supporting activism, there are still significant hurdles that are associated with its novelty and lack of legal precedent. This challenge brings us to key open questions and opportunities in this area. There are several that we discuss in the paper, but for the purpose of this talk, I will briefly highlight two. First, participants highlighted that AR's potential for social change lies less on the tools itself than in the institutional conditions in which these tools are situated. The uncertainty around laws relevant to AR activism carries a potential for HCI to inform equity and accountability policies to support creators, such as collective management of platforms. Second, Many participants found that either they were able to or wanted to achieve higher quality and more impactful projects with interdisciplinary collaboration. However, finding productive and respectful collaborations can be challenging. We encourage researchers, activists, platform developers and organizations to consider community-driven strategies that emphasize long-term engagement and participatory planning to address some of these challenges. In conclusion, we contribute one of the first studies detailing creators' experience with AR activism, including how they use AR in activism to reshape physical contexts, to evoke emotional experiences, and to mitigate risks and consequences. From this, we also highlighted opportunities for institutions and tools to better support AR activism and its creators. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out our paper.